Welcome in everybody to our YouTube channel here at Fantasy Pros. I am Lauren Carpenter. And if you want a chance to win a signed Gabriel Davis Buffalo Bills jersey, courtesy of our friends over at Pristine Auction, it is very easy to do. Just make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment on this video and other videos. The more comments you make, the better your chances are of being the beneficiary of our giveaway, courtesy of our friends over at Pristine Auction of that signed Gabriel Davis Buffalo Bills jersey. Make sure you have your notifications turned on because we will be announcing the winner on this channel. And in this video today, we have 10 players that you should avoid in 2022. Number 10, Tyler Boyd, wide receiver, Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the target's receptions and yards and touchdowns weren't a huge drastic gap between Boyd and T. Higgins. However, the fantasy production uh, was a different story. Higgins finished as the wide receiver 18 with 182.1 points and about average 13 per game, while Tyler Boyd finished as the wide receiver 29 and averaged roughly 9.4 points per game in half PPR scoring. Now, with the addition of T. Higgins and with the addition of Jamar Chase, it's pretty clear that Boyd has dropped to the wide wide receiver three in this offense. Now Boyd's ADP is toward the back of the 11th round, so it may be tempting, might be a little juicy, but again, this isn't necessarily about avoiding the risk of taking Tyler Boyd. Instead, other players that are going around the same time as Boyd is Tua Tunga Vailoa, Hunter Henry, or Marquez Valdez Scantling. I may want to have just a little bit higher upside instead of the wide receiver three position that we have with Tyler Boyd. Number nine, Amari Cooper, wide receiver, Cleveland Browns. And here we are yet again, looking at the Browns having another hot mess of a season. Adding Deshaun Watson was definitely controversial, but all of that aside, this offense is gonna look a little weird. First of all, Deshaun Watson hasn't played football in an entire year. And let's say even if he doesn't play, we're looking at a backup in Jacoby Brissett. None of this says anything positive to me about the ceiling for Amari Cooper. Now let's also not forget that the Cleveland Browns run their offense on the ground. So they literally run their offense and who wouldn't between Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Now what makes Amari Cooper even more of a red flag here is that he is going in the early fifth round and that is far too early for a player who is going to have very limited upside. Instead, other players that are going in this round are DJ Moore or Jerry Judy. Number eight, Chase Claypool, wide receiver, Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, there's two big issues with Chase Claypool here. One of them is consistency issues, and the other one is the quarterback position. We don't know who is going to be the starting quarterback between Mitchell Trubisky or Kenny Pickett. Now, as far as pieces in these offense go, it's not that the Steelers are without any viable fantasy options. Uh, let's see, Najee Harris is really good. Oh, don't even get me started how much I love Deontay Johnson and even Pat Fryermuth. And speaking of their tight end, he is going literally just one pick away from Chase Claypool. I would much rather have the consistent floor that Pat Fryermuth is going to give you than try to rely on the iffy upside with Chase Claypool who relies on big, deep plays, splash plays in order to be fantasy relevant. Number seven, Michael Carter, running back, New York Jets. There was every reason to believe that Carter was gonna take a huge step forward this season. That was until the Jets drafted Brees Hall, which kind of gave us an inkling as to how the Jets feel about their confidence in Michael Carter moving forward. Now, even though he was the leading rusher with 147 attempts, both Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson were both annoyingly fantasy relevant in this offense. So Hall is likely to cut into Michael Carter's touches and his volume on a team that ranked dead last in rushing attempts in 2021. Number six. Devin Singletary, running back, Buffalo Bills. I have a saying, and I believe it holds true this season as well, never draft a Buffalo Bills running back. Sure, Devin Singletary was the leading rusher in 2021 with 188 attempts for 187 yards and seven touchdowns. However, their quarterback, Josh Allen, was right behind him with 122 attempts, 763 yards, and six rushing touchdowns. Kind of in a similar position like we see with Brees Hall in the Jets, James Cook was drafted early in this draft and unfortunately that doesn't look good for Devin Singletary who is probably going to be splitting either by committee with just James Cook possibly even Zach Moss but definitely Josh Allen in this round where he's going which is the mid eighth I'd much rather have Tony Pollard Hunter Renfro or Elijah Moore 
Now these next five players, you may have to draft, but if you do, do it with caution and avoid if you can. But our number five player on our top 10 players to avoid list is Travis Etienne, running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's a lot of hype surrounding Travis Etienne and I understand why. He was very explosive in college, he got hurt early, so we haven't got a chance to see him play yet in the NFL. However, James Robinson health is looking very, very good and his chance to excel in this offense is still going to be there. However, this really doesn't have as much to do with James Robinson as it does with the coaching change. Doug Peterson is one of those coaches that epitomizes the running back by committee. And since 2017, when he won the Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles, that has yet to change. So Travis Etienne is going in the early fourth round. Considering we're likely gonna see a running back by committee offense, that's a little bit too rich for my blood. Instead, in the fourth round, go ahead and take my aforementioned darling, Deontay Johnson, wide receiver for the Steelers, or if you're looking for a running back, try Antonio Gibson for the Washington Commanders. Number four, DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Seattle Seahawks. I'm saying this as a realist. I am a graduate of the University of Missouri and I have zero faith in Drew Locke. I'm sorry. I also don't have a ton of faith in Geno Smith. Together, yeah, they can be serviceable, but those two guys do not add up to Russell Wilson, who is no longer the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. So as much as I would love to tout DK Metcalf because of his talent, he's on this list because of the quarterback play. And again, this is another fourth round pick. I would rather look to a wide receiver in Deontay Johnson or Michael Pittman instead of taking DK Metcalf. Number three, Josh Jacobs, running back Las Vegas Raiders. In 2020, Josh Jacobs was the RB8, and we were all very excited about him heading into 2021. And then the Raiders signed Kenyon Drake. And then we all realized that Jacobs can really only be super productive when he's the bell cow back, and that's going to be a problem with him moving forward, especially after they drafted Zamir White. Now, another situation much like we have with Jacksonville is Josh McDaniels is the new coach over in Las Vegas, and he is also a epitomizer of the running back by committee, if you will. During his time in New England, he never had a running back that eclipsed 200 rush attempts or 35 plus receptions. Now, in 2021, Josh Jacobs finished as the RB14, and he actually did eclipse both of those numbers. So what are we looking at this year with a head coach that doesn't really like to use a single running back? Looks like Josh Jacobs is going to be falling even further than an RB14. And Josh Jacobs is another one of these fourth rounders that you can have a better opportunity with and someone like Antonio Gibson if you are looking for the running back position in the fourth round. Number two, Darren Waller, tight end, Las Vegas Raiders. So let's stick with the Raiders here. And while I did mention the coaching changes before when we were speaking of Josh Jacobs, for Waller, this is more of the addition of Devontae Adams. Now, I've heard many arguments supporting Darren Waller because of the double teaming and defensive scheming around Adams, but everyone, let's not forget, Hunter Renfro is still there. And he did eclipse targets over Darren Waller last season. I understand he did play in more games than that, but Renfro isn't going away. So because Adams and Waller are two of the biggest threats in in this passing game, it's likely going to be Hunter Renfro that sees a majority of these targets simply by default because he's going to be open. So instead of taking Darren Waller, again, we're talking late third, early fourth round, instead target Hunter Renfro who's going towards the mid to end of the eighth round. Number one, Tyreek Hill, wide receiver, Miami Dolphins. So not only does Tyreek Hill have to deal with a young quarterback who has yet to play a full season in the NFL and to a tongue of Iowa, there's also a lot of mouths to feed in this passing game. But what I find the most concerning here in this offense is the new head coach, Mike McDaniel. Now, he was the one who was instrumental in the creativity of the run game while he was an offensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. He was also the one instrumental in making Debo Samuel a rushing wide receiver. So true to brand, they went out shopping in bulk for running backs this offseason. So what that says to me is that they're going to be more concerned with creating a consistent run game as opposed to feeding Tyreek Hill targets. Instead, go ahead and look for another wide receiver at this position, which is in the late second round. Sometimes I've seen him go as early as the late first round, which I would highly avoid, and instead target Jalen Waddle, who you can pick up in the fourth round. 
And there you have it, folks. Those are 10 players that you should avoid in your upcoming drafts for the 2022 season. Remember, if you're not already subscribed, please do so. Turn on your notifications, leave a comment, and you just might win that signed Gabriel Davis jersey courtesy of Pristine Auction. And make sure you're following us on social media at Fantasy Pros. And for a little bit deeper dive into 10 players that you should avoid, you can check out my article on our website at fantasypros.com. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.